I'm going to eat my words, which is the ashes and the star cursed king. It doesn't really take you through a journey. Like it's perfect. It's such a good book. The first one I read, oh my God, I'm so excited to talk about this. And I just want to be highlighting and underlining every second page because that's what I want to be reading. I want a book that's going to make me cry my heart out. <laughs> that is still really tall. Let's make you a little bit shorter. Like there. I feel like that's good. Pretty bang on, I think. How good, hi guys, welcome back to another video. Ooh, being a little bit risque, this top. I've just gotten back from the beach, hence why I'm a bit of a disheveled mess, but that's okay. I've got my matcha. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's that time of month again where we wrap up all the books that we read from the previous month. And I'm actually so excited to get into this video because it has been such a good reading month, not in terms of quantity, but definitely in terms of quality. So I read a lot of books this month that were new releases and very anticipated reads for me, which it just makes the month a little bit more exciting when you have books to look forward to that are coming out and books that aren't just like, that was a bit rude. Aren't just books that you like, but are quite hyped books. And I don't know, I'm just really excited. So let's get into it. As you can see, I read one, two, three, four, five books this month. And I'm not the type of reader who is going to be sitting here saying I read 20 books in a month. It's not me, unfortunately. Anywhere between five to eight books, I would be happy with in a month. And I feel like it, that way I actually absorb the books that I'm reading and enjoy them and don't feel like it's a chore reading. I feel like when I try to read more than that, I end up not looking forward to reading and that's just not a place we ever want to be in. In terms of the genre of books that I read, I read two romance, one magical realism, one fantasy, maybe a historical fantasy. I don't know if that's giving anything away. It's kind of like a fantasy, historical fantasy, historical fiction, all of the above book. We'll get into it in a minute. But I did read quite a diverse range of books this month, which I think helped in the reading side of things. I usually try to read like a romance, then a fantasy, then a romance, then a fantasy, and try to put thrillers and other little genres that I don't read as often in there as well. I feel like if I read too many of the same genre, back to back. I just don't enjoy myself and I feel like I'm comparing the current read to the last read, which is never really any fun. I made a matcha at home and I put honey in it and it's actually so good. It's really hitting the spot, which is nice. Yum. I'm so excited. What did I read first? I'm going to go in chronological order. If you don't know, I also keep a, <laughs> I'm not a good reads girl, unfortunately. I wish I was, but instead I just keep a little tally in my notes app on my phone, which is like the most chaotic thing you've ever seen and I basically put my ratings I'm not going to show you but I put my ratings and little thoughts and feelings that I have along the way as I'm reading these books the first one I read oh my god I'm so excited to talk about this this summer will be different by Carly Fortune if you guys know I loved every summer after it was one of my favorite reads I read it and it just you know when you just read a book and it just hits you and then sometimes you read a book and you're like yeah I get why people like that but it just wasn't for me. Anything she writes hits me in the heart. The way that she does like the then and now timeline, she does like a friends to lovers really, really well. I just love it. I don't know what she puts in this, but I want to eat it up every time. I always tab the hell out of her books as well, which is great. She just has a way with words and creates a story with so many like really cutesy heartfelt quotes. And I just want to be highlighting and underlining every second page. So this book follows a guy and a girl who meet in a small town and they have quite a fast paced, thrilling one night stand. And then they realize the guy is the girl's best friend's brother. Obviously it's a bit of a forbidden romance. They go through life not really communicating or acknowledging their feelings for one another. So it's very lusty. It's very tension heavy. It's definitely not all spice. She has a way with writing where it just makes you really feel like you are in the shoes of the main characters and you understand why they do the certain things that they do, even if it is a bit questionable. If you've never read anything by Carly Fortune and you are a romance reader and if you like like Emily Henry, for example, I would say Carly Fortune to me is the most comparable to em Emily Henry. And I love Emily Henry. So that just tells you everything you need to know. I obviously rated this one five stars. I absolutely loved it. I 
can't wait to read it again. I feel like it's the perfect summer read as well. It's set on Prince Edward Island, which is in Canada, I believe. I could be wrong, so don't quote me. Not a geography girl. Once you like picture what the island looks like, and she's very good at describing what this island looks like, it's just the perfect summer read. It really is, that's all I have to say. So five stars, obviously, for that one. I think I'm gonna read Meet Me at the Lake next because that's the only one that she's written that I haven't read. What did I read next? The next book I read was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And this was my book club's book of the month. And I say of the month very loosely because every time we have a book club, we always organize our catch up a month later and then we never end up catching up. Like one of us always has something on. So it's been about a month now. We haven't caught up yet. So if you guys are from my book club, don't listen to my thoughts, please skip ahead. But what did I write about this one? Because this one was such an interesting read for me. The visuals in this book are insane. It's giving Age of Adeline mixed with Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I feel like that's the perfect way to describe this book because it's very similar to the storyline of Age of Adeline, but the, I guess the plot points are a little bit different, but kind of a similar premise. Essentially, a girl makes a deal with the devil back in 1770 or something, like quite in the past. And her deal was that she would live forever, but the consequence is that no one remembers who she is. Minor technicality, really. And she goes about her life trying to make her mark on the world in a world where no one remembers who she is. So it's very, very hard. Everyone she meets, as soon as she turns away from them or they turn away from her, they forget who she is. And she is longing for connection and love, but she can't find it in anyone because no one remembers who she is. Until someone does, of course, our boy Henry. It's all about her trying to figure out why he remembers who she is. It's just a really good book. I gave it four and a half stars. I didn't feel it was a full five star read. I feel like the ending for me was a little bit lackluster. Like there was a little cheeky plot twist. Well, not really a plot twist, but more of a like, it ended on a good note, I think, in a way that makes you think, okay, this story is not over yet but it just didn't give five star reads, but it was very, very close. I would even say 4.75. Like I really, really enjoyed this book and I actually can't wait to read everything else this author has written because the way that she's written, and I've spoken about this before, there's certain authors where they write in a way that just like tickles my brain. <laughs> and I read some books and I'm like, I don't gel with this author's writing style at all. And it just doesn't sink in, but I ate every word of this up and I read it in like five days or something, which as someone who works nine to five, like that's actually quite good for me. <laughs> so yeah, definitely recommend that one. The next book that I read was, ah, I'm so excited about this one because the sequel comes out in like, less than a week, I'm pretty sure, which is Wild Eyes. This is Wild Love by Elsie Silver. This is the first book in the Rosewood series, which is a separate series to the Chestnut Spring series. And if you guys know, the Chestnut Spring series is one of my favorite series of all time. If you like small town cowboy romance, this genre is for you and this author is for you. She just writes them so, so, so well. And if you like a little bit of a spice in your book, then you're gonna love this. <laughs> I listened to this on audio on Spotify as well as reading this copy and I found that was a really good way to do it because I find some audiobooks, some audiobooks which we'll talk about a book coming up that I read in this little pile here where I tried to listen to the audiobook and it just didn't hit but this audiobook the voices and the narrators, they were so perfect. Like they had a man narrate the male perspective and then a female narrate the female perspective. And they just did such a good job. Like it really just kept me in the book. What I will say is I didn't think I'd be down for a billionaire romance, but I don't know if you guys have any more billionaire romances, I might have to get into the genre because I so, so, so enjoyed this one. I gave this one, I gave it four stars. Like it did what it needed to do in this genre of book. I don't ever expect anything too deep like I'm not looking at like a Addie LaRue level of deepness in my small town romance books but I do think because I read it so close to this summer will be different which is quite an in-depth book it, it did feel a little surface level just in terms of like the characters and the plot lines and what they overcame in saying that like I really did still enjoy it and I really enjoyed the overlap between the Chestnut Springs series and this one and how there were characters and I won't give anything away but there were characters from that series that came into this series as well so I really really enjoyed that aspect and I think it just set up this world in this new series and this new town of Rosewood. I think it's Rosewood. Rose Hill. Oh my god, where am I getting Rosewood from? I think it's because I've been watching Pretty Little Liars again and that town is Rosewood. 
Rose Hill. Rose Hill, not Rosewood. Anyway, did really love it. I actually think I would give it more than a four stars if I'm being completely honest. Maybe a four and a half. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being really generous this month, but I really enjoyed this and I'm going to pick up Wild Eyes as soon as it comes out on the fourth and I just can't wait to read it. It's going to be so good. The next book I read, I literally purchased the day it came out and then I proceeded to not read it for about a month and I kept seeing so many people read it and give their reviews, which weren't weren't particularly the most positive thing I'd ever heard <laughs> and that just made me not want to read it at all and I wasn't really in a fantasy mood as you can probably tell from the books that I've read so far this month but in saying that once I did pick this one up I did really really enjoy it this book did suffer second book syndrome it is the second book in a in a fantasy series that is very much reminiscent of the Hunger Games. However, it's set in a world where there are ordinaries and there are elites and the elites have powers and the ordinaries have no powers and ordinaries are basically treated as a plague, like they're going to infect the elite people and diminish their powers. So ordinaries are outcasts in this world. It is a very interesting story. The first book in the series, Powerless, I didn't really gel with. I was like, yeah, this is fine. It's a good book, but it didn't really like hit me. And then the second book, which was a novella, Powerful, which was based on a character we found out about in the first book. I really enjoyed that one. I thought that one was much better than the first one. I was like, yes, can't wait to read this one, which is technically the second book, but it's the third book that she's released in this series if we're counting the novella. Make it make sense. Anyway, <laughs> I was really excited to read this and I did feel that there was not a lot of plot going on in this book. It very much, and my sister gave me this idea because she read it recently as well. She said it reminded her of The Bounty Hunter and it absolutely does. It's basically just like a cat and mouse game through this whole book between our main characters, Peyton and Kai. Peyton and Kai. Each of them is just trying to escape the other. It's very banter heavy and very dialogue heavy and they're just kind of getting from one plot, plot point to the other, but there's not really any, I don't know, it just doesn't really take you through a journey, if that makes sense. And there was a plot twist at the end of the book and I do love a plot twist at the end of the book. I love it when you get to the end of the book and you're just like, oh my God. But the plot twist was very, it was like it was just thrown in there. And I'm not gonna give away what the plot twist was, but if you've read it, you know. And it definitely does set it up for the next book, but that just makes it so that this book feels a bit obsolete. It was like, okay, what's the point? Were you really just taking us through a whole book just to get to the plot point of the next book? Anyway, that being said, I do really love the banter and the dialogue between the two main characters, and I feel like that is definitely what saves this book. It's definitely a romantic rather than just a fantasy, and the romance element is definitely picking up in this book which I quite enjoy. So not a bad book by any means, but definitely just not what I was expecting. I think I gave it three and a half star, which is a lot lower than I thought it was going to be. It was very highly anticipated, but three and a half stars still quite good. Like that's above average. So we'll see what the next book brings, but I don't think it's coming out for like a full year yet. The final book that I read this year was a novel love story. I'm going to eat my words <laughs> with this book. If you've been on my channel for any length of time, you would have heard me speak about The Seven Year Slip, which is Ashley Poston's, one of Ashley Poston's other books. She's got three books in total. She's got Dead Romantics, Seven Year Slip, and she's got a novel love story, which is her newly released book. So very highly anticipated for me because I absolutely love Seven Year Slip. It is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. I think it's just like, it's perfect. It's such a good book had me crying, had me laughing, had me blushing, had me sobbing, like it was just amazing. Since then, I have tried to read The Dead Romantics and I have failed. <laughs> I've gotten halfway through the audiobook and I just haven't gotten into it, but I do think it is the narrators of the audiobook that have made it harder for me to engage with it. Like it just doesn't feel like, I don't know, I, I, I just feel quite cringy when I read it and it's just not how I wanna be feeling when I'm reading a book. Anyway, so I DNF'd that one. <laughs> But I'm going to buy the physical book of that and then I'm going to I'm going to finish reading it eventually. But I picked this one up because I've heard really good things and I just really wanted to love it. And I didn't hate it. It's not like I hated it. It was just not what I was expecting. Basically, the premise of this book is a girl is on her way to an annual book club that she holds with her friends. However, this year, none of her friends can come. They've all bailed. She decides she's still going to go because she's going through quite a lot of turmoil. Oil. 
oh my God, I can't talk, term oil in her life. And she feels that she really needs this. So on her way there, her, she gets stuck in a rainstorm and she ends up in this town. Unfortunately, her car breaks down. So she has to stay in this town for longer than, than she thought. But the more she's in this town, the more she's realizing it's very, very familiar to her. And it's very familiar, and this is not really a spoiler, it comes up in the first chapter of the book. It's the setting of her favorite romance series. And yeah, she, all, she knows all the characters, she knows all of the different spots in the town, and the story goes on from there. And it's a great premise, and I think the story itself was really good. I just didn't feel connected to the characters, and the love interest wasn't, like it didn't sell me. So that was what let it down for me. I ended up rating this one three stars, and that's why I'm saying I'm eating my words, because Seven Year Sleep is a five star or even a six star read, like it's so good. I just felt like this one didn't have as much depth. And I feel like she has the potential for so much depth, I just didn't really connect to it as much as I wanted to. And it also didn't help that the audiobook had very strange narrators, so the female narrator was a very southern woman, which is fine, but it just took me out of the book a little bit, especially when there was like a little spicy scene and she was like very much in a Southern accent. And I was like, this is just, it's just not hitting the same. She was like, oh my. <laughs> and I just couldn't take it seriously. So maybe that's a me thing. But what I will say is this is definitely a book written for book girlies. It's a book written for those who love romance reads. You love the tropes in books. You love um, just listening and hearing about books. It mentioned authors like Emily Henry and the Song of Achilles. Like it had little nods to bookish things. I just really enjoyed that, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite book of all time. And I just really hope that she, you know, in the future goes for more, more styles of writing like The Seven Year Slip because that just like, I need more like that. If you guys know any books like The Seven Year Slip that you think I will like based on my reading preferences, please let me know because that's what I want to be reading. I want a book that's going to make me cry my heart out. <laughs> so they are all the books that I've read in August. How crazy. I have also started reading, just so you guys know, <laughs> I've also started reading the second book in the Serpent and the Wings of Night series, which is The Ashes and the Starcursed King, I think. The Ashes and the Starcursed King, yes. I'm really enjoying it. I did start reading it a few months ago and I only read like 50 pages and then I put it off to the side because I wasn't really enjoying it. But now that I've started reading it again, I am loving it. So I'm hopefully gonna finish that in the next few days and that'll be in my next wrap up. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I just love having a little community of book girlies around me. So yeah, definitely follow if you enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys for my next video. Bye.